And G-bombs refers to this, those six foods, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds, which have the most scientific evidence for having lifespan enhancing and anti-cancer effects. And when you put together a dietary portfolio that includes a wide variety of these types of plant foods in your diet, you have onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds and nuts and green vegetables, you get the most potential to live a long life. So in other words, narrowing your diet to be plant-based may help you, but if it's rice-based or potato-based or fruit-based, and you don't have the variety of other foods that are sufficient, you're not going to get the ability to push the envelope of human longevity. Variety and having including enough green vegetables makes a big difference. And that's one of the messages you're getting about this lecture, that these, these protective um, foods like onions and mushrooms and berries and greens have anti powerful anti-cancer effects, anti-fat storage effects, and anti-angiogenic effects. They're like a natural um, anti-cancer mechanism. And they have other anti-cancer gene silencing and accelerate removal of toxic carcinogenic compounds from the cell and increase cellular repair mechanisms. Whereas that load of oil calories or sugar calories entering the bloodstream does the opposite. The surge of calories in the bloodstream gets too high, it suppresses immunity, and we're talking about high glycemic carbohydrates right now, means, which means how much glucose can you get in the bloodstream after you eat that meal? The glycemic load refers to how fast that sugar comes in, how much comes in right away versus coming in over hours. And when you eat something like a bean, the carbohydrate calories, when converted into glucose, comes into the bloodstream slowly over a three or four hour period. Whereas you eat white flour or sugar or honey, it might come into the bloodstream in five minutes. Like we say with oil from the lips to the hips, in five minutes flat, goes in right away. We get the same calories from a nut or seed, it inhibits its absorption going in slowly. The body can preferentially burn it for energy instead of storing it as fat. And, and, and so it's a completely different biologic effect. So one causes satiation, desire not to eat for hours, and the other comes in quickly and, is, and stimulates the brain to want to consume more calories. We're talking about comparing oil to eating the same um, food that supplied that oil. So glycemic load, high glycemic load diets, more sweets, are linked to multiple cancers, and of course, gallbladder disease, dementia, aging of the body. And if we rate carbohydrates on a hierarchical scale of quality, we see that beans in general have the most slowly digestible carbohydrates. They're the most, they go into the bloodstream more slowly. They have the most fiber. They have the most resistant starch, which also gets degraded by bacteria in the gut to form beneficial, to affect that biofilm to slow the absorption of glucose. The glucose excursion into the bloodstream is slowed by those foods we're talking about, including beans, which are a combination of a high in resistant starch, high in fiber, and high in um, slowly digestible carbohydrates. And because the resistant starch is not absorbable into the bloodstream, the calories are lost. And they produce more of the short chain fatty acids uh, activated by bacterial action on the fibers, and the, which becomes a negative feedback loop to the apostat in the central nervous system. Butyrate has, has a negative effect on appetite in the apostat uh, in the hypothalamus. And butyrate is a breakdown product from fiber and resistant starch. So when a person looking to lose weight, who's diabetic or more overweight, you know, we have, we do want them to have more beans because also when we have more beans in the diet compared to other sources, of, uh, as we, we favor beans and, ha and have regular consumption of beans in the diet. It has more powerful anti-cancer effects and more protein, more plant protein, because beans are high in protein. And keep in mind that as the, since the bean is already high in protein, since the resistant starch component is not absorbed into the bloodstream, it's counted as a carbohydrate portion of the bean, the actual part of available calories that are protein in the bean is even higher than what's the, what you, you have thought. And we're talk, we're gonna talk about protein in a minute here. So beans protect against cancer, whereas high glycemic diets has been shown to increase the risk of cancer. For example, here's a study showing increased risk of breast cancer by 87% in people eating more high glycemic diets. And just the two times a week, that's amazing. Just consuming beans twice a week, decreased risk of breast cancer by 24% in the nurse's health study. And of course, beans are full of all kinds of beneficial nutrients like inositol, pentacus phosphate, lignans, and polyphenols. And 
keep in mind that we have a lot of evidence in recent studies and we give studies more credence if one study corroborates and shows the same thing another study showed. And we also give a study of high credence points if it includes a large number of people and it follows people to strong endpoints or hard endpoints, which means death or cancer diagnosis or a heart attack. We don't just see the cholesterol goes down, the triglyceride includes the person lost weight, or we, that's a soft endpoint. The hard endpoint takes years to look at to see if the person really did benefit and really did live longer from having those soft endpoint changes. So here's a, a 25 year study, which is a huge amount of time for a study. Um, studying different protein intake and how much protein people consumed. And they found that the more animal protein people ate, the shorter they lived. And the more plant protein they ate, the longer they lived and higher intake of plant proteins. And when we're talking about high protein plant foods, we're talking about foods, pretty much plant foods that are not processed like white flour or not fruit. So it's because beans, nuts and seeds and green vegetables, and even some grains like quinoa, amaranth, and teft, you know, are relatively high in protein, have plenty of protein. So unless the diet is like a, you know, so I'm not saying a low protein plant-based diet isn't better than the American diet, but, if, but keep in mind that protein bioavailability goes down with aging and diets that are marginally too low in protein affect a person's health and vitality when they get to be after 85 years old with frailty, increased risk of hip fracture, falls, loss of, um, of brain size, and of course, loss of muscular fitness and agility as well. So we're talking here, protein does matter, particularly when you, as, you, as you age. And so we want to have a diet that's plant protein adequate. And we're going to continue to talk about that. And here's some, of, I just wrote down three studies if people wanted to see the conversion of this study from 2016, a study, 2018, 2020, the continuing study of protein and lifespan showing more animal protein leads to more in early life mortality. And early life mortality means death before the age of 70, an increased risk of early life death. And these keto diets and these paleo diets and these carnivore diets are particularly lifespan threatening and dangerous but you don't sometimes see the dangers until people get older, but then they don't really get to be that elderly because there's too high risk of early life death. And we're talking about the fact, a lot of reasons why high animal protein affects death, early death, and plant protein extends lifespan. A few of these things we can talk about, I don't wanna to spend too much time on them. One is IGF-1, the fact that the high biological value of animal proteins go into the bloodstream which are linked to obviously higher rates of cancer, but they're, they're growth promoters and we shouldn't be promoting growth of cells. They're angiogenesis promoting, they allow cells to replicate and grow and they allow cells to metastasize and cause cancer. So we're, and also there's a lot of other reasons why, including the exposure of, we're talking about to, to the digestive tract, a different microbiome and the production of pro-inflammatory modulators and, and chem chemicals given off by bacteria in the gut, like TMAO, which is a, excites the endothelium and can even be a, promote inflammation in the body and increase your propensity for dementia and cancer. But there's a lot of other reasons why, which I'm not going into right now. But would, would plant proteins don't raise IGF-1 to unfavorably high levels. Mm -hmm.